So the last question we are going to start today as we have discussed our last question, first four questions yesterday and we are going to start with the last question. So the last question is, how do you usually understand the idea of selfishness and do you agree with Kisa Gautmi that she was being selfish in her grief? Yes, how do you get this idea of selfishness? Selfishness means that you have to think for yourself only. It means that you should not lament over the sufferings of the world. You should not lament over the, over the grief. It means, of course, we feel pain. There is no doubt in that, that we feel pain when our near ones or our dear ones, they uh, depart this world. But this doesn't mean that we will soak ourselves in that grief so much that we should not be able to come out of that grief. Okay. And do you agree, Kisa got me that she was being selfish? Yes, she was selfish in her grief as she did not know, as she has not accepted this reality that her son has come, that, her, that the life of her son has come to an end. She was just believing the fact that it was just a disease which can be cured. She was just trying to find it, find a medicine in order to cure her son. For that reason, we can say that she was selfish. She was not accepting that reality that what actually life is. Life is another name of going on. If we will stick on to our griefs, our sufferings, our pains, then there is not even a single time when we will come out of those sufferings and pains. We will ultimately have to suffer a lot. She was of course selfish as she was not uh, she was not getting herself accustomed to this reality of life that life and death both are part and parcel of our life. Okay, so one should not be so selfish as to accept the reality that what actually life is. Okay, so now some of the extra questions that I'm going to discuss for today's class. Please note down on the side of your book as these will be quite helpful to you, right? Now, let us write down first question. So first is... What does the sermon at Banaras refers to and who has delivered it? Who has delivered it and what was that sermon? And what was that sermon? What was that sermon? Yes. Who has delivered it? And what was that sermon? Yes. Students, you please come at proper time in class. You come too late. So now, first uh, part is, what does the sermon at Panaras refers to? The sermon at Panaras, it refers to the reality of life. Okay, that death is inevitable. Human uh, life, it is full of pain and suffering and one should be accustomed to accept this reality. One should behave in a practical manner or it means that one should face the practical reality of life. Right? That anything that has taken birth will definitely come to an and, and this sermon, who has delivered it? This sermon was given by Mahatma Buddha, okay, the great saint Mahatma Buddha. And what does this sermon refer to? And this sermon refers to the reality of life. This I have already discussed, okay? Write our next question. How does Buddha compare? How does the Buddha compare the life compare compares? How does Buddha compare right fruit? To that of human life. So how he has compared ripe fruit to that of human life. 
so how he has compared can anyone speak for this answer that how has compared human life to that of you can say yes how he has compared human life to that of you can say ripe fruit so we have read of course okay that uh, the great gautam buddha has compared human life to that of ripe fruit how because as a ripe fruit after being ripened it has to fall down from its tree in order to be served similar to change its form similarly human life upon passing through various phases or various stages of life it also has to come to an end and like the ripe fruit it will find its new origin back from where it has originated this is the reason why human beings they die after completing their age okay so now next question so this you know that what happened to kisa gautami's son and what did she ask her neighbors this there is no doubt in that that what happened to kisa gautami's son that her son was wa that her son was dead but she was not at all accepting this reality that her son was dead she was going from one house to another or she is going to her neighbor's house in order to get medicine in order to get her son cured she was getting selfish in that okay so now next question is next question is you can write down buddha said the world is afflicted with the world is afflicted with death and decay what does he mean what does he mean so world is afflicted with death and decay so what does it mean can anybody give the answer in your class i feel that you Are not so up to the mark because you people least participate in discussion. You always believe that uh, we should listen to the teacher only. So I don't think so that if you are only listening and not answering, you will be capable to write your answers in an elaborate way. Just come out of your comfort zone. Just come out of that fear of speaking because you people feel it as a fear. You feel that of course it is a fear to speak. Yes, anybody. again no right so finally buddha said that the world is afflicted with death and decay and what does he mean yes there is no doubt that buddha has given an important sermon about the reality of life he had in order to make kisa got me understand the reality of life he has said that world is afflicted with death and decay it means that death and decay it means birth and death are the two possible the other two you can say realities of life if anything that has taken place of course it will die and it will depart and it will leave the world forever there is a lot of pain and suffering in human lives and human beings have to suffer various kind of pains and it is just because of this reason that he is saying that this world is afflicted with death and decay and we should never deny this fact that human beings they have to suffer a lot their life is of course so you can say it is you can say it is a sea of sufferings okay there are lot of pains and human beings they have to suffer a lot okay so we cannot deny this fact okay next question what truth of life does gautam buddha give out in his first sermon again the same one okay write down this question who can attain peace of mind who can attain according to buddha according to buddha who can attain peace of mind who can attain 
peace of mind yes according to buddha who can attain peace of mind yes who can attain peace of mind according to buddha yes so who can attain peace of mind so according to buddha those persons who have understood the reality of life who have understood that life there in that uh, life is afflicted with you can say suffering and pain one has to suffer various kinds of you can say problems one has to face various kinds of you can say difficulties and it is just because of this reason that he says that that those persons who have turned who have understood the practicality of life okay practicality of life means practical truth of life only those persons will come out of this pain and suffering only those persons will leave their you can say leave their sufferings as well as uh you can say pains aside and those persons will ultimately you can say despite of lamenting and despite of shedding grief upon the death of their near and dear ones they will ultimately attain peace and uh, means who will attain peace those who have understood this reality of life okay only those persons will be able to attain peace in their lives okay so the uh, these type of you can say questions can be asked some more questions for you why did prince siddharth leave palace and became a beggar okay so why did why did prince siddharth leave the palace and become a beggar and become a beggar so why he left why he left his palace because one day when he chanced upon a suffering man when he was when he was on his hunting trip trip then what happened he chanced upon an aged man who is suffering then he has also met a funeral okay funeral procession he has also seen a beggar begging for alms this made her heart you can say feel a lot of pain and then he has come to know that this life it is of course full of sufferings it means that in our lives there are lot of sufferings so finally what he thought looking at all this okay he left his palace and ultimately he became a beggar and by why he became a beggar to find enlightenment and he went in search of enlightenment okay and it is because of this reason that he went in search of enlightenment okay so this is you can say this is the reason why he has left his palace okay so if i ask this question in an alternative manner suppose what are the effects of sufferings on suffering what are the effects of sufferings on the of the world on buddha so what was the effect of sufferings of the world on buddha the sufferings of the world or uh, sufferings of the world has entirely changed buddha's life as he was living a princely life he was enjoying all the luxuries and he was having a happy life he was married he had a son also but when he has seen those sufferings of the world he has changed up his mind and he wanted to find out the reason of these sufferings and he also wanted to find out you know, find out the way how to attain peace okay he also wanted to attain peace so it is just because of this reason that he left his house and went to see enlightenment okay he went to seek enlightenment and find and he wanted to find the reality behind you can say life that what actually life is <coughs> excuse me okay so i hope that this answer is clear so next question is what did buddha do after seeking enlighten enlightenment what did buddha do after seeking enlightenment after seeking 
enlightenment so what he did after seeking enlightenment so what he did after seeking enlightenment he has he wa he wa, he never came to his princely life he has come to know this fact that uh, suffering and pain or human life it is afflicted with pain and suffering and these are part of our human life okay he he moved from one place to another in order to impart education in order to in, uh, in in order to make other people enlightened also he started preaching he spreaded his preachings okay and ultimately he shared his knowledge with other people through his teachings so that the other people will also come to know the reality of life that there is no you can say life is not a bed of roses of course there are thorns and with these you can say with these luxuries and sufferings we have to ultimately live our life okay so this is what he has done so next question is according to kisa gautami what is the greatest grief in life according to kisa gautami let me write down this question according to kisa gautami what is the greatest grief what is the greatest grief of life so what is the greatest grief of life according to kisa gautami yes what is the greatest grief according to kisa gautami so according to kisa gautami the greatest grief of life is the is the death of your near and loved one okay for her as the greatest grief was the death of her son and she was not ready to accept this reality that her son was dead she was going from one uh, she was going from door to door or to neighbor's house in order to get medicine to cure her son finally she was as she was not accepting this reality for her that was the greatest grief that a person suffers when your loved one departs you okay so therefore what should be done in spite of So you can say, in spite of lamenting or instead of lamenting, what wife should do? The wife should accept the reality. Okay. So what does the wife should do? The wife should accept the reality of life. Some problem with Bhumi guys. She is re-entering again and again. Okay. So this is what has to be done. Okay. So again, this question I have discussed that what does Buddha say about death and suffering? That death and suffering they are the part of human life we cannot deny our life devoid of this kind of pain and suffering they are part and parcel of life if anything has taken birth it has to pass a circle of you can say pain and suffering also along with along with getting happiness okay and the wise people never grieve never lament during these difficult times but ultimately what they do is they accept the reality of life and this reality of life is of course the ultimate way of attaining peace in our life only those people who adjust to the practicality of life who adjust to the practical reality of life only those persons they have the power to attain peace otherwise what happen the others will keep on lamenting and they keep on suffering and they keep on getting you can say pain in their lives okay so if i discuss about long questions so suppose the question is life is full of trials and turbulations and kisa got me also passes through a period of grief in her life and how does she behave in these circumstances life is full of trials and turbulations trials and turbulations may many difficulties okay and difficult situations and kisa got me too has suffered a grief in her life kisa got me too has suffered to grief in her life how does she behave
during those circumstances how does she behave during those circumstances yes how does she behave during circumstances yes uh, suppose this will be a long answer in long answer you have to uh, elaborate your answer you have to write in an elaborative manner so you can start that there is no doubt in this fact that life is full of trials and turbulations as a for even according to gautam buddha the life is uh, life is uh, life is afflicted with pain and suffering in his case of kisa gautmi her beloved son was dead but she was not accepting this reality that her son was dead instead she was going from one door to another in order to get medicine to cure her son okay so for that reason what is happening then somebody or a person directed her to go to sakyamuni buddha who understood her pain and wanted to deliver uh, and wanted to tell her the reality of life what he has told he told her to procure mustard seeds from a house where no one had ever died she was going from one house to another but finally she was not able to find any house where anybody was dead so finally what happened then at the end of the day while she was sitting uh, outside the city she saw the flickering of lights of flickering of lights in the city and finally this flickering went off then what happened she has come to know that how foolish she was and how selfish she was in her pain that she has forgotten this reality of life that actually what life is that actually life is a process of suffering and pain one has to pass anything that has taken birth it will definitely come to an end and this is what buddha told her that only wise men they never grieve over they never grieve and lament okay but what happened that is that now what happened that they accept the reality of life okay and one who is one who is composed composed means balanced one one who is com composed he obtains peace of mind and he will be free from any kind of you can say sorrow and is always blessed okay so this lesson gave her enough strength to overcome her grief so it means that what your answer should be it should not be like that you are repeating the same and same things if you are writing same and same things of course the content is same but that doesn't mean that there will be you can say repetition of your you can say words try to find new words try to use impressive vocabulary it means that if you will be different if you will be uh, you can say writing somewhat extra and somewhat you can say impressive than that of other students only then you will be able to fetch good marks okay so one more question that i am going to discuss is that personal losses personal losses are a part and parcel of our life so next question i think this is 8 or 9 personal losses are a part and parcel of life yes okay so instead of dwelling on them we should have instead of dwelling on them dwelling means crying over them we should have we should have or we should move in light what should happen that we should move in life this message of gautam buddha has has become more this message of gautam buddha has become more 
relevant in relevant in modern times yes this message has become more relevant in modern times and give your opinion or do you agree or not see how the question is molded means whatever you have read now you have to present your own view points okay so here no there is you can say you will not focus upon pisa godmi but you will focus upon the entire things that you have understood from the chapter i told you that there is more understanding in this chapter okay it means that you have more understanding than you can say with just only your content okay so i don't think so that there is no way of saying no that there there that personal losses are not part and parcel of life of course of course these personal losses they are part and parcel of our life and this gautam buddha was completely or he was deeply explaining throughout this chapter as he has also given a message that instead of wailing on them we should not because there are deaths there are departure of our loved ones from our life but this does not means that life is a steady race okay life is not steady ultimately we have to suffer a lot of pains by the death of our near and dear ones by loss of materialistic things also so what happens a person or human life it is afflicted with pain and suffering this pain and suffering it is a part and parcel of our life he has made us understand that only those persons who has understood the practicality of life practicality mean that is the practical reality of life only those persons who understand the practicality of life they are ultimately able to attain peace they will, who are composed okay who are composed or the only those people they obtain their peace of mind okay and and this you can say this peace this attainment of peace this understanding of reality of life it is ultimately affecting their you can say personal as well as professional lives as uh, another name of life is moving on okay so if one thing is lost or if one loss has happened to our life this doesn't mean that our journey would stop okay but we should carry forward we should move on we should you can say still go on with our you can say with our life not giving an end to our life there is no way of giving an end to our life okay so what he has said so now he said that is it relevant in today's time it means that in today's time how this stands true okay so even in today's time okay when a person is having a broader you can say prospect of mind or he is having a broad thinking to adjust okay in every situation then he has broader aspects to explore in his life he has many chances in his life to explore and ultimately ultimately you know that a time and tide wait for none okay they wait for none so ultimately what happen is it means that if you of course of course in present time when there are so there is so much of imbalance in life there is so much of you can say there is so much of diversity in living a life okay and there are so many allurements means people are allured to different kind of things there are so many of luxuries that everyone everyone feel that this is my right to get these luxuries but during that when they are not able to attain those you can say luxuries of life sometimes they face too much too much of you can say harassment they got harassed but the thing is that the one who is composed then one who understand this fact that pain and suffering they are part and parcel of life they ultimately obtain peace and when you are at peace with yourself only then ultimately you are able to live a happy life so it is not uh, it is life is not focusing upon what you don't have life is another name of enjoying what you have okay and this is what is the hidden message in this chapter okay that we have to accept the rules of life the truth of life as well as death also and we should we should not lament over the losses we should not face bad for the feel bad for the losses that has happened in our life okay 
So ultimately in this chapter, Buddha has given us an important lesson on death and suffering. Okay, that death and suffering, they are part and parcel of life. We should not lament. See, so much, just one thing is there, but how deep this message is. Okay, that how deep this message is, that what death and suffering mean. Okay, death and suffering, what actually it means? It actually means the reality of life, the truth of life, that in our lives, there is, of course, death. There is, of course, suffering. Suffering can be taken in any form. It is not only the suffering, the pains, the physical pain we get, but it also refers to uh, materialistic sufferings. Of course, when we are, you can say, in the race of obtaining all the luxuries, but we are not getting, means we can take it in both the ways. Okay, so this is what uh, Buddha wants to deliver to us through this, so you can say, chapter that ultimately one should, who will attain peace, who will be composed. Be composed, be balanced, be, uh, be, you can say, have understanding about the realities of life that, of course, every human being deserves the best, but it is uh, finally upon our, you can say, uh, upon our hard work and the kind of, you can say, it is, of course, a cycle of karma, okay, that we ultimately attain, right? So this is all about sermon at Banaras, and I hope that with the discussion of these extra questions you have, deep understanding of the chapter. Now I'm just going to take the doubts if you people have, you can ask me if you have any doubts.